So we're working on building a better food system at Blue Apron. And our vision for a food system extends from the farm all the way to the fork. And we want this better food system to be built on a foundation of healthy soil, cultivated through biointensive production practices, and facilitated by radical improvements in supply chain efficiency. The gateway to all of these improvements is better planning with farmer partners. This direct connection with the source of our food will enable the changes that we need to make to make our food system resilient to the challenges that it faces. Those challenges are vast. I've spent the last decade basically focused on those challenges prior to coming to Blue Apron, where in an academic setting, um, I was working on the grand challenge of nitrogen in agriculture. So right now, nitrogen is not supplied to agriculture in this systemic way, supported by biointensive production practices. Instead, the productivity of our current food system rests on synthetic nitrogen fertilizer, which is produced in an incredibly energy-intensive process fueled by natural gas. And when it's applied to farm fields, results in emissions of nitrous oxide, a, a greenhouse gas 300 times as potent as carbon dioxide. This leads to greenhouse gas emissions that are, need to be reduced by 70 to 90 percent by 2050, according to experts, in order for our food system to be able to persist and not have levels of climate change that would be um, unmanageable. Our food system also is um, directly linked to unsustainable rates of biodiversity loss, unsustainable water withdrawals, especially with food production in arid regions, and water pollution that results in undrinkable water that has very expensive water treatment costs. So we need to address all of these problems. We also need to improve the production uh, increase the production productivity of our food system so that all of the new people that are going to be on the planet by 2050 have enough to eat and that that food production is not threatened um, by impending climate change. So these systems need to be more resilient and more productive. So Relying on a single, on externally provided inputs is not a way to provide this type of resilient structure. Instead, we need to work on building the soil so that the soil can feed the plants. And during the production of crops, we're also working on producing soil help. This is a cover crop that's going to um, support the productivity not only of these eggplants, but of the subsequent crop. And we need to make sure that that food is actually getting to eaters. And that's where Blue Apron comes in. Blue Apron has a means of achieving this balance between productivity and all of the other environmental services that we need our food systems to provide. And our means of doing that is this structure. So we want to build strong food systems. Those systems um, are built on healthy soil, and that soil is going to support the productivity of the whole system, rather than relying on an external input to provide that. The system's productivity is also going to be supported by biodiversity within the system. We want diverse crops, and we want to manage the pests that might emerge in those systems through the d diversity of surrounding landscapes thereby reducing the toxicity of the food supply that we're eating. And we need to do all of this in a way that is more energy and water efficient than the current status quo. So, why are we getting into this? So this is the situation that brought me to Blue Apron. This was Blue Apron's demand. We wanted unique specialty varieties of produce to engage our customers and provide the excitement that they need to stay engaged with their food system. And this was the available supply. 
So Blue Apron needed to go out to the um, farmers and create a supply that was equivalent to demand. So we engaged with growers all across the country and said, we have these target crops that we need to supply in volumes that will meet our customers' demand. What is your regional you know, production potential? How can you help us meet this demand? How can we work together? And so we developed plans that cobbled together the capacity of growers all over the country to supply our entire national demand. We went back to the farmers and supported them from the planting of the crop to the harvesting and delivery of that crop through guidance that allowed them to hit our target menus. Our chefs supported this process by planning menus around these crops that we had already planned with farmers. And we are monitoring crop progress to ensure that those crops are ready when we need them. So what this worked out to support was a system where we have growers going directly to Blue Apron, going directly to eaters. And so this is the increase in supply chain efficiency. No longer do you have to go from the grower um, to a distributor, to a grocery store, to then maybe go to an eater, where along that way you're losing all sorts of um, healthy food. So instead, we go directly to the farms, and all of those farms produce not one of them could have produced our, our demand for eggplants, but together we engaged 16 different farms that were able to produce our supply. But it didn't come off without a hitch. We have an increasingly challenged food production system, and one of those big challenges is climate change. So our growers in California this year had this great plan about all of the eggplants that they were going to grow for us. And then we had temperatures that were over 100 degrees for more than five days in a row. That meant that the blossoms on the eggplants in California were literally burned um, and could not set fruit. So those growers um, were not able to supply the planned volumes. But they were not the only growers in our supply chain. We had engaged 16 different farms across the country. So we were able to shift. And while these growers were having um, excess stress to their crops, our growers in Pennsylvania were having an excellent growing season and had more than the productivity that we had planned for. So through this diversity, we were able to still have the supply that we needed with um, one balancing out the other. This is also um, shifting our focus in the future to do more to plan for this, where we have one region compensating for another region to add this resilience to our food system. So with each grower, we analyze their climate and we see, okay, when is your peak season? Do you have two peak seasons? Is one more reliable than the other? Is this one too short for us to really work with? And when is it that we're going to get this heat that is becoming increasingly frequent and extreme that we just can't deal with for each crop? So we're providing this type of guidance to our growers to make them stronger, to in turn make the whole food system stronger. This also extends to, syst to system services other than crop yield. We want our farms to not just provide good food. We want them to be good neighbors and to provide for good drinking water and healthy soil. This is not a sign of healthy soil. This is a sign of too much phosphorus running off of farmed fields. So we wanted to engage with our growers. We're already making plans with them. It makes sense to talk about more than food so that we can provide the visibility to our customers that our supply chain really is indeed contributing to a healthier planet. So we went out to 41 of our, farm, uh, our farms that we partner with this year and we provided comprehensive soil health testing, which um, among many things assesses levels of nutrients in the soil to see whether they have an excessive phosphorus problem. We are then able to pro provide them with guidance of 
production practices that they can adopt to mitigate that phosphorus problem and ensure that that phosphorus is not winding up in our drinking water. We also, through this direct engagement with growers, learn about what their biggest problems are. When we're talking about, okay, what do you feel comfortable committing to in terms of volume? They can say, well, in a good year, you know, I can do this. But sometimes they're like, well, if I have an outbreak of this or that, um, I'm not going to be able to provide the supply that we're talking about. So we talk about what their biggest pest problems are. For eggplant, it's flea beetles and Colorado potato beetles. So I went out um, after engaging with our growers on their plans and talked with a researcher at the University of Maryland who's an entomologist that studies these pests and said, we want to provide a healthy pesticide-free food supply for our customers and our growers are having problems with these two pests. I see that you have done work on this. Can you tell me about a system that might help our growers still achieve productivity without so many um, insecticide inputs. And he shared information on this crimson clover based um, production system where crimson clover is cultivated alongside eggplant and acts as a living mulch. It also provides habitat for the predators of the Colorado potato beetle and the flea beetles. Managing the um, uh, Colorado potato beetles at levels that were lower than even the treatment that it received insecticide. So these two, two treatments with and without insecticide were the ones that had the crimson clover. And you can see that they did even better than traditional insecticide. So this is productivity through systems, not through inputs. And so it's through these partnerships with farmers that we can make our food system better. It's not a one-way dialogue that says this is what you need to do to do better. It's us being better listeners and understanding what are the challenges that you're facing on your farm and how can we as eaters support you to make the better um, production practices. So. Um, I think through this, this, di this theme of dialogue, it extends beyond the food system and can provide a way for us to tackle many of the challenges that we are facing. Thank you.